Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another episode of Shop Talk. Today I'm going to continue on talking about carbide inserts. We're kind of on a roll with this subject and I, and I still got a lot of questions and a little bit of chatter here and there out there on the Facebook pages and people asking questions about different inserts and stuff like that. So that's why I continue to go over them. But today I wanted to pick out my personal favorite carbide insert that I use for all my general turning and facing and whatnot and go ahead and and show you and that is the CNMG insert particularly uh, CNMG 431 432 that size the 400 size of insert so I'm gonna show you why I like this insert why it's become my go-to insert around the shop and why I like to use those because it covers it covers different tools and different angles that you can use on those inserts different corners and, and use them all up you know you have another popular one out there is a WNMG which has six corners also known as a trigon insert those are excellent too I've got a bunch of those around here I, I use both of them but my favorite is a CNMG because you have eight cutting edges on that and for the longest time growing up through the shop I never realized that you could use the other four corners of the insert my dad had never bought the tools for it. I just thought you could use the, the, the proper turning or corners to, for turning and facing. And then I discovered there are these other tools out there that you can buy to use up all eight corners of a CNMG insert. And there's several of them that I don't have. There's, you look in a kennel metal book, you know, it's like that thick. There's a lot of other tools and boring bars that you can buy to use the same insert to be able to use up other the other corners of the, the insert. And some of those I would like to acquire eventually. So we'll see about that. So I'll go ahead and get the camera down here and get you a closer shot again. We'll go over the, the insert real quick and kind of go over these, these tools and why I like this insert. So to start with, we'll just go over the actual insert that we're using again and that is a CNMG 432 or that could be a 1 or a 0 or a 3 so C and again we're using this book right here this engineer's black book to decode everything so C is your 80 degree rhombic N is your relief angle and that is the relief angle underneath the cutting edge whenever you're when you're talking about relief angles this is a negative rake insert Negative rake means that it is kicked at an angle. If you're looking at this insert in line with the bottom of the tool. So if it was straight, it would be parallel. But you can see that it's, it's tilted down. That is a negative rake insert. So these inserts are square on the side. There's no relief ground into it. If this was a, a, flat, ins, a flat tool, which... I can't remember which one that would be. You would have to have clearance ground underneath the, the carbide insert there, underneath the cutting edge so that it would clear the work. So a zero degree relief angle. M has to do with the tolerance with manufacturing, three to seven thousandths. I think somebody had asked me about that. From what I understand is that is a tolerance that manufacturers are given to fall within when they make these inserts size wise. You know, it has to be within those dimensions right there three to seven thousandths and G is how the the insert is fixed to the tool and the style of chip breaker and then when you get down to the 432 4 indicates your insert size this is being a half inch inscribed circle half inch inserts what I call it three is the thickness so he's three sixteenths and then two again is your nose radius so two is a one thirty second nose radius a one is a 164th nose radius and then let me see we get to a a three a three is going to be a 364th radius and it, and it just goes up and keeps climbing all right so that's a quick rundown of the insert well, let's check out the the tool so these are my five tool holders that I that I commonly use for a CNMG insert and we also have this facing mill here. We'll go into that in just a couple minutes. So these two right here, this is your this is your right and your left. And you would use these for turning and facing. 
on a multi-fix, sometimes I'll turn it and use it for chamfering inside, outside. This tool right here, this one's great for chamfering. I use it a lot for chamfering or cutting angles, just any kind of angle that's not critical on what the angle actually is. You can just use this angle that's built into the tool, come up and break edges, that kind of stuff. You can also use it to make undercuts. If you've got a turn down an area of a shaft, not from the end, but somewhere in the middle of the shaft. These are great for plunging in and then going across and coming back out. So good tool for that. And then these two over here, these are the ones that I haven't shown very much of, but I have questions about these. So these two inserts right there are the ones, as well as this one, they use what I like to call the odd corners. These are the corners that's used on these, on these tools, the corners that we're using are not used on this tool right here, okay? Let me pull one out and we'll take a look. So whenever you're turning and facing with a CNMG tool, you're using these corners right here. All right, and once those are burned up, you typically throw it off into a bin somewhere to collect for carbide scrap, whatever. But if you have these other tools, you can make use of these other four corners right there, you know, because you, you have those two and then you flip it over and you got those two. So that's why I like using this insert because you have several tools to, to use up all eight corners of that. All right, so uh, these two, you know, this is a MCLNL and then this one would be an MCLNR and then mine are all three, three quarter shank. Take the uh, 400 size insert this one right here so you guys are curious mchnn this one was a one inch shank tool whenever i bought this kenna metal did not offer this tool in a three-quarter shank so i had to buy it in one inch shank and mill it down so i got it milled down to fit my holders right there and then these two they do offer in a three-quarter shank so the one that i use all the time would be a mcknr 124B. And then this one's actually brand new. I've never used it, but I pulled it out for video. I don't even have that clamp right there. MCKNL. So these are excellent for facing. If you just want to do some facing and not burn up your good corners here, you can put this tool in, find some of your carbide inserts that's already got the edges burned up, and use this all day for all your facing. These are also, these other, these other tools right here, because they have like a lead-in angle to them, they're excellent for interrupted cuts, or if you're machining something that's been, say, flame cut, any kind of rough edge, like a flame cut or a plasma cut, these are the preferred corners that you want to use whenever you're doing turning or facing. That's why I would like to have some boring bars that use this corner also. Every now and then you got a, a piece of steel that's been flame cut that you've got to turn the outside or bore the inside and you don't want to tear up your good insert so you can just use up these corners right here. All right. So one other thing that I wanted to point out while we're on the subject of these tools it applies to any tool and that is the torque that you want to use on these clamping screws so all right here's a good example I grabbed this insert because you see it's chipped right here this corner's broke so this is a great insert to drop on that tool right there and use that corner so whenever you're whenever you put these tools on there this is really all the the amount of torque that you need. Just use the short end of an Allen wrench and that's all you need. Now out of sheer habit, most of us do this. You know, you'll tighten it up quick and then you'll give it a little extra there and on that one there, but it's really not needed, I'm telling you. If you'll get, so, get yourself in the habit of just giving it a nice firm grip like that, that's all you need. Never go full A-bomb torque on those screws. All right, so let's move these back out of the way since we talked about those. And we're gonna go over this face mill real quick too. So this is a three inch face mill that was given to me by a viewer. I cannot recall the name of the viewer, 
but this is an excellent tool made by uh, the company that sells it. It's called Discotech, and you can find them on eBay. So if you'll notice, these, these are the same inserts, the CNMG. And whenever you use this tool, you're using these odd corners over here. So this is a great tool to have in your arsenal so that you can, again, use up all of these other corners on these inserts after you're use after you use them for turning or and vice versa you know so i was really glad to get that it's a great tool to have around here you can't face up to a square shoulder because of your angle right there but it's great for just milling and hogging down metal it's a great tool for that so there you have it that's why i like a cnmg tool now a couple of things i'll point out here it depends on what size lathe that you're running. If you guys watch me, you know that I've got some pretty heavy duty lathes, you know, industrial quality lathes. I don't run any small bench top lathes, old South Bend lathes or belt driven type lathes. If you're, if you're using machines like that that don't have a lot of horsepower, a CNMG or a negative rake insert may not be the best choice for you. You might go with something like a CCMT those are a neutral rake insert, usually a little sharper on the cutting edge, and you can get a little better performance out of your machine whenever you're doing that. So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, one other thing that I was going to say too is that this is, a, this is just a little cheap plastic bin. One of the few things that I find useful from Harbor Freight, that's where it's come from. If you've got a lot of loose inserts, this is a great way to organize them. These are a lot of loose ones that I had floating around in one of these drawers over here. And I, I bought a few of these and this is the first one that I used just to try to organize your inserts on instead of having a bunch of them in a, in a drawer. Just another good way to keep your shop organized. Of course, you can go in here and you can label the top of it so you know exactly what you're doing. If you know what the insert is or, and you know the grade and all that kind of stuff. So I just was going to throw that out there. That's a little tip for you right there. So I will put the nomenclature for each of these tools in the video description for you guys that are curious about this and would like to pick one up for yourself. I'll throw some Amazon links up there for whatever I can find, uh, including the uh, black book. I'll put that link in there again. And hopefully that helped you out. I enjoyed the discussion. I always like talking to you about stuff around here that's useful and keep this conversation interesting. And until next time, we'll see you later. I've got a couple clips here that I'm gonna share with you that I've filmed this week. And this is using the MCKNR-124B insert tool, using a CNMG 431 insert. Right here, I'm facing off a three inch nut goes on a hydraulic cylinder. It's a little bit too thick, so I had to bring it down a little bit. So I had a little interrupted cut there at the beginning, and those inserts were great for that. That material had proven to be a little bit tough, so I was kicking the feed rate up there trying to get that chip to break over. I just wasn't having very much luck with it. And just one more of the MCKNR. This is just me facing a piece of heavy wall steel tubing at work. I'm just using my iPhone to take this clip.